Okay guys, so now that we have our paper um, with our uh, measurement sketched out and we have a piece of tracing paper that's the size of one of our triangles, um, the next step is to uh, design an artwork that is going to go um, inside um, your mandala, all right? So you can see mine here is a combination of my bats and my keys. Again, my bats are my organic component and my keys are my more geometric man-made component um, in this uh, design, all right? Um, so you're making a piece like this and basically you will um, trace it um, forward and then the next image over you'll flip this over and trace it backward the next one will be flipped so that it's basically going to be mirror imaging itself all the way around all right um, so how do you do this good question um, I um, like I said um, found my images that I'm going to use for this project online. Um, this image is very dark, so I took Sharpie and I'm going to use the back side where the Sharpie is to trace my details out um, off of. You want to make this sketch as detailed as you possibly can. Um, I don't have all the hairs I could put on these bats um, in my drawing yet. Um, I might add more, even more, so that I'm making each panel symmetrical to the last one. Um, this one has enough contrast that I can kind of see what I'm doing, just laying my tracing paper over it. You can see, if you can see through your tracing paper, you know, um, you can trace what's there. Um, I just, you know, you see there's not enough contrast there, so it made it much easier for me to turn it over and trace it on the back. Um, you know, if you're finding it still difficult to see, um, you can lay your artwork and your tracing paper on um, a window where there's direct light shining through. You could also put it on a big tablet, you know, um, put your tablet as bright as you can and put it on a big tablet and use that to trace. If you've got a light box, that helps a lot too. Um, in terms of what kind of design works well, um, you're going to want to fill the majority of this triangle. Um, you will want some negative space toward the outside. I have some negative space behind my keys here um, because um, you'll want it to uh, have some watercolor in that background outside. So leave a little space, a um, little open negative space. Um, there's, you don't want to have so much um, negative space that's overwhelming. Um, I think the easiest way to start laying out your design is to take your artwork that you're going to trace and place your triangle over it. And um, I recommend to make sure that the artwork touches um, and goes outside of at least, it should touch at least three of the edges of your triangle. So it touches here, it touches here. It touches here so it touches all all three sides so I, I recommend that it's big enough that it touch all three sides of your triangle um, you can arrange it you don't have to include the whole image in I could split this bat's head up here more so if I wanted to um, so I could push it out here and have my bats um, most of my bats face here and less of my bat here um, once you decide where you want to put it um, you can hold it down with your hand and then just trace over the lines carefully.
Okay. So there are my bats. Um, I would say, you know, double check to make sure that you haven't left anything out of your sketch. Um, this is going to be the basic form of my bats. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is add my um, geometric or man-made forms to these organic natural forms in my sketch. So I think I am going to I'm going to make this this part the top of my design so I'm going to focus on leaving some open space you know up and around the top so that I can add um, some um, watercolor up here um, in this negative space and keep give it some contrast um, up at the top but I definitely want to make sure my center space has something going on and some of these other spaces when I say I'm going to leave some open space, it doesn't mean all of this has to be completely free of things, but um, you definitely want some negative space to work with up here. All right. So I'm going to try to add some keys. Again, I can just choose the pieces I want to add in and sketch them in. I'm going to make it look like they're layered behind my bats. So I'm really looking for a contrast, a uh, visual contrast between the uh, organic flowing forms of the bats and the more angular geometric forms of the keys. I might exaggerate some of these key shapes to make them look a little bit more angular than they already are. I don't have to um, trace all from the same place. I can move my artwork around. Like, especially with something like these keys where they're a little more free form. I couldn't probably do this when I was drawing the bat, but with like the keys I can. I can choose different ways to place them. I feel like I can get a little bit more, like I said, inventive with their shape as well. Could even layer other keys behind these keys that I've drawn. So it feels like I've just got a pile of antique keys.
the more things hit the edge, the more I'm going to have interesting, um, more abstract moments um, because of the reflection. So um, I encourage you to um, really let things hit the edges here as you're working. Okay, so there you have it. Here is my design. This has a little bit more negative space over to the edge um, and a little bit less of the full bats. The first one I did had a little bit more of the full bats. So I'm gonna think about which one I might like to do. But you can see here, I experimented with layering some on top of the bats too. Either one of these would work. I'll have to do some consideration and think about which one is my personal favorite um, for this project. Um, the next step is going to be putting it on the board. So we'll look at that next time.